So in this chapter we're going to talk about color in Photoshop. And we're going to talk about color management, color modes, color settings and profiles, and then the interface for color. So the first interface for color would be in the toolbox or the tool panel would be our color picker. And a color picker allows you to select a color from your image. So we could go ahead, select a color, or select our foreground color. We could go ahead, drag this around. You can display your hue, saturation, brightness. So you could slide this down and change your hue. Make it desaturated. Or by brightness. And you could also do it by RGB lab color space, CMYK, and then even hex for web. You have different color libraries and you have add to swatches too. So you could select a color here and add to your swatches. So once you have your foreground selected, you could select your background color. And X will swap the foreground and background color. And then to reset the defaults, you could hit D. Also, if you just want to pick a color, you can use the eyedropper, which is I, and select your color. Now from there, you have your color palette, or your color panel, which again, you could find all of these panels under the window, or you could bring it up with F6, or just by clicking our icon panel. And here, we have our color, We could select a color here, and it will be represented in the color panel. If you want to change that color, you can use the RGB sliders to sort of change the color. Pretty straightforward. Now in our drop-down, we have different color sliders for each of the different modes that are within Photoshop. So we have RGB sliders, CMYK, lab sliders, web color sliders. We can also display in hue, saturation, and brightness. So it's just another way of displaying your colors and choosing your colors. Then we have our swatches, where we have predefined swatches or palettes of colors that we choose. Like these are ones that I use. And you go ahead and select colors from here. If you want to add a color, you can simply select color, click inside here, and name your swatch. If you want to edit them, you could hold down the Alt key, and you could remove that, or you could grab it and trash it, so on and so forth. Now you can build up a library of your choice, and then you could save it out, or you can load your own. So you click your drop down, and you could display it in different ways, large thumbnail, small thumbnail small list, etc. You can also go to your preset manager where you can manage your swatches, where you can load them here from wherever you have your, your palette set. You could rearrange them and do all your management there. You can also just load your swatches and save your swatches from here. Or you can load up Adobe Photoshop's presets, and if you placed yours in the proper location, like our previous tutorial, you can have yours available here too, and just load them up straight from there. Next, we have our histogram. When you have your histogram, which is a visual representation of brightness, color, and value levels in your image. And so you could display them by channel or by luminosity. You can also refresh your cache states. You could select your source, selected layer, entire image, and then you have some statistics down here that help uh, give some information about your image. So the mean, so the mean is the average intensity value. The standard deviation is the variation of intensity. The median 
is the middle value in the intensity range. Pixels is the total amount of pixels in your entire image. Your level is the intensity value that's under your pointer. So you can select in here and your information will change. And so this gives you information based off of that selection or the pixels that are under this. The count is the amount of pixels that are in that selection. The percentile is the collected number of pixels below the pointer too. Then you have your cache. And so basically what your cache is, is kind of like hidden storage for, for data that's kind of like pre-computed in Photoshop. Basically the higher the level, the faster is your cache. Now let's look at the color modes. Now under image, mode, we have some modes here that Photoshop uses to represent color. And a color mode is a mathematical way to reproduce and display color. So Photoshop's default is RGB color. And RGB color is a 24-bit mode, which means it has 8 bits per channel, 3 channels of RGB, which equals 24 bits. So if you do 8 times 3 equals 24. Let's talk about bit depth for a second. Basically that is the color information per pixel. And so the more bits that you have, you have more, more available colors and more color accuracy in your image. So something that is one bit has two possible values, black and white. Something that has eight bits has 256 possible values, which can equal to 16.7 million colors. So when you do the math again, your 24-bit color is 8 bits per channel, 3 channels. 8 times 3 is 24, 24-bit. 24 now, there's also 16-bit images, which we look under here. There's 8 bits per channel, 16 bits per channel, and 32 bits per channel. And these 16 and a 32 gets into high dynamic range imaging, or HDR. And we'll talk about that stuff later. Now RGB is also an additive color mode. So if we look at our color panel here, we have RG and B, and right now it's black. And monitors display in additive. So what that means, it adds color by adding light. And so we're adding the light for different channels, like the red channel. If we bring this all the way to 255, which in RGB, 24-bit color, we have 255 possible values per channel. So when we bring this all the way to 255, you can see that we're full red. If we bring all of these to 255, we get white. Or if we set these to the middle, to 128, 128, 128, we'll get gray. Or if we set these all down, we'll get 0, 0, 0, which is black. So our next color mode, we can look at bitmap or duotone. These are grayed out because they need to be grayscale first. So you need to convert your document to grayscale. And so you can either flatten your image or merge your image or don't merge it. And then also, this is a permanent application for this. So it's going to remove all the color information for this document. So if you hit discard, now you're only in grayscale space under our slider here. And if we look under our image mode, we're in grayscale. So we don't have access to RGB color anymore. So that's one thing to be mindful about when you're working with this. And from there, this displays 256 shades of gray, and in the sliders it's represented by a percentage. So another way to do grayscale, which is what I recommend, I'm going to revert my image, and do an adjustment layer of black and white. And that gives you some presets and it gives you control over colors in your image and allows you to dial in your black and white. 
which gives you finer control over just converting it to grayscale using your hue saturation and just desaturating it. Or go ahead and select your image and do desaturate. So your best option there is to use black and white and then control your channels. And then I'm going to do a bitmap. And so a bitmap is going to create an image based off one bit per channel. And so what that's going to do is give us an image that's just one bit. So you can see what that did there. It just removed all our color information and just has white and black. I'm going to revert my file again. And there's some other methods here. We have pattern dither, diffusion dither, half tone screen, and custom pattern. And so let's take a look at these examples. So here's our 50% threshold, our pattern dither, a diffusion dither, a half tone dither, and then a custom dither of your choice from a pattern. Now our next color mode is duotone. And so in duotone allows you to create monotone, duotone, tritone, quadtone. It also has some presets that you can use. And you can see that in the duotones you can select a color of your duotone. and represent your inks this way. There's also curves which you can control how much or where you want the range to be for that color. Which is pretty cool. And you could control that too. And so you could see there that's our duotone. And then we have index color Index color is a way to create sort of like old school GIF files and stuff like that where it's just a palette based image. You can see that right when we turn that on, our image bit has become dithered and um, basically because we're assigning a certain amount of colors to the image. In this case, we're assigning 256 colors to this image and go to our image and look at the color table these are the colors that we chose this image to use. You could load this and save stuff and you can also have some other different displays here. But let's go back and take a look at that again. Index color. You could force black and white your primaries or force it into web color. You could also say hey, I want this to be 16 colors and you could see what it's doing there. 128 and then if we had transparency you can use that your mat which is your color underneath it and then your different dithers and then your amount so your amount is that sort of the tightness or the threshold of your dither so if we set this to like 25 you can see that the space in between our dither and our next step is much shorter than if we set it to 75 the range is wider there so that's index color. Going back to our modes, we have CMYK. And so again, when you're using these modes, you're converting your image to the mode. So you can't use RGB anymore. You're switching the color mode out from RGB into CMYK. And CMYK is a subtractive color mode, which means the color is pure until you start mixing another color into it and you reduce its primary color. So it's for working with pigments and it's for working with like paint and printing um, which uses media. So again it's like you're reducing its primary color by mixing in another color. So if we look at our palette here we switch our slider to CMYK. It's also measured in percentages or a value that represents the amount of ink or process ink and for the separations. 
So if you reduce the K, which is key black, you see that it's getting brighter. And you dial the colors that way. Now CMYK also can't represent 24-bit color. So it's just something to be mindful of if you're printing. Inks cannot reproduce every exact color in the, in the spectrum. Then we have lab color. And lab color is all about human perception and about how color is seen through your eyes. And so it's device independent, which means it's not about how it's displayed on your monitor. It's about how it's seen and how it's perceived. In our palette, we have our lab sliders. And if we click on our color picker, we have our lab colors here. And it's a different method of working with color. And then we have multi-channel. And what multi-channel does is add 256 levels of gray per channel. And this is used mostly in like specialized printing and uh, that gets into the whole printing mechanics and stuff like that and not really get it gonna get into that too much. So those are our color modes. They're found under image mode. We have bitmap, grayscale, duotone, RGB color, lab color, and multi-channel. And this brings us to color settings and color profiles. So let's take a look at our color settings. This will bring up our menu. And so what color settings are are different ways of displaying color in Adobe Photoshop. So we have North America General Purpose 2 is sort of the default and I know a lot of people just leave it on that which is totally fine. Um, but there are some other options which is monitor color. And so this one is geared towards um, video on-screen presentations and emulates color behaviors of a lot of video stuff based off the description down at the bottom here. And then they even say the setting is not recommended for documents with CMYK data. So the general purpose sort of is kind of a best all-around color setting to use. Um, and a lot of people leave it at that. You could get more specific in some of the working spaces if you want, if you have more knowledge about these. Um, especially if you get into printing and you know your different uh, color settings and your profiles and stuff. You can go ahead um, and use that depending on the printer that you're working with and so on and so forth. And then there's your management policies, which is you could turn them off, you can preserve embedded profiles when you open them, or you can convert them to whatever your working space is, which is um, your sRGB working space. So that means if there's a file that isn't your sRGB working space here, it's going to either automatically convert it or preserve it or if there's mismatches you can go ahead and say ask and it'll tell you what to do so I usually keep these checked and that way I know kind of what's going on it's not auto doing anything um, it just asks me and I could decide at the time whether I want to use it convert it or embed it um, so those are the color settings so let's take a look at assigning profile and convert to profile if we select this, you could say that changing the document profile can affect the appearance of layers. Continue, yes or no. Let's continue. Right now, I'm in the working RGB space, which is just default sRGB. We can either say, don't color manage this document, use the working one, or give it a new profile. So if we select that, you can see that the color did change. There's a difference between this working space and this Adobe RGB 1998 working space, which actually, I kind of like this better. So in this particular case, I'm going to hit OK. And so what I did was assign that color space to this image. So it's sort of like tagging it. And then you go ahead and save it. And you probably want to save it as something else so you don't you keep your original master intact. And you could just say Adobe 1998. And you could embed the color profile and hit Save. Now let's look at Edit convert to profile. Now convert to profile controls how Photoshop handles colors from one space to another. And so we have your source space, which is what we're working in now, and then our destination space. And uh, Photoshop sort of assumes that you know what you're working with here and you have knowledge of all these spaces. So this is something that you don't really go into and just kind of like mess around and, and swap color spaces and stuff like that. Um, then we have like 
conversion options, which is in our engine here, which kind of controls how it maps uh, colors and gamuts. And then the intent is the kind of the rendering intent used to translate the document. And then there's use black point compensation, which uh, sort of uh, ensures shadow detail is sort of preserved when you're printing stuff. And then use dither, which is um, controls and reduces the banding um, due to mixing in some other colors to try to reduce uh, colors that it can't represent or sort of control that banding. And, and that's pretty much it for the convert to profile. Again, like if you're if you're not really have an understanding of how this is working or what you're using this for, then it's probably not really for you. It's definitely for um, for like printing and output needs that are very specific to somebody that you're working with. But those are the main aspects with color in Photoshop. And again, we have a color picker, a color panel, a swatches panel, our histogram. Those can all be accessed under the window. Then we have our image, color modes, 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, and then our color settings and color profiles.